Do you think there's a distinction between the concept of learning and the concept of reasoning? Do you think it's possible for neural networks to reason? So I think of it slightly differently. So for me, uh, learning is whenever I can like make a snap judgment. So if you show me a picture of a dog, I can immediately yeah. say it's a dog. But if you give me like a puzzle, you know, like uh, whatever a Goldsberg machine yeah. of like things going to happen, then I have to reason because I've never, it's a very complicated setup. I've never seen that particular setup and I really need to, you know, draw and like imagine in my head what's going to happen to figure it out. Uh, so I think, yes, neural networks are really good at uh, recognition, but they're not very good at reasoning because they're mm -hmm. like, if they have seen something before or seen something similar before, they're very good at making those sort of snap judgments. Mm -hmm. But if you were to give them a very complicated thing that they've not seen before, uh, they have very limited ability right now to compose different things like, oh, I've seen this particular part before, I've seen this particular part before. And now probably like this is how they're going to work in tandem. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for them to come up with these kinds of things. Well, there's a certain aspect to uh, reasoning that you can maybe convert into the process of programming. And so there's the whole field of program synthesis and people have been uh, applying machine learning to the problem of program synthesis. And, and the question is, you know, can they, the step of composition, why can't that be learned? You know, this the step of like, building things on top of like little intuitions, concepts on top of each other. Uh, can that be learnable? What's your intuition there? Or like, I guess similar set of techniques, do you think that would be applicable? So I think it is of course, learn it is learnable because like we are prime examples of uh, machines that have like, or individuals that have learned this, right? Like humans have learned this. So it is of course, it is a technique that is very easy to learn. Uh, I think where we are kind of hitting a wall basically with like current machine learning is the fact that when the network learns all of this information, we basically are not able to figure out how well it's going to generalize to an unseen thing. Yeah. And we have no, like a priori, no way of characterizing that. Uh, and I think that's basically telling us a, a lot about like a lot about the fact that we really don't know what this model has learned and how well it's basically, because it's, we don't know how well it's going to transfer. Yeah. There's also a sense in which it feels like we humans may not be aware of how much like background, how good our background model is, right. how much knowledge we just have slowly building on top of each other. It feels like neural networks are constantly throwing stuff out. Like you'll do some incredible thing where you're learning a particular task in computer vision, you celebrate your state-of-the-art successes and you throw that out. Like it feels like it's you're never using stuff you've learned for your future successes in in other domains, and humans are obviously doing that exceptionally well, uh, still throwing stuff away in their mind, but keeping certain kernels of truth. Right. So I think we're like continual learning is sort of the paradigm for yeah. this in machine learning, and I don't think it's a very well explored paradigm. Yeah. Uh, we have like things in deep learning, for example, right? Catastrophic forgetting is like one of the standard things. The thing basically being that if you teach a network like to recognize dogs and now you teach that same network to recognize cats, it basically forgets how to recognize dogs. So it yeah. forgets very quickly. I mean, and whereas a human, if you were to teach someone to recognize dogs and then to recognize cats, they don't forget immediately how to recognize these dogs. I think that's basically sort of what you're trying to get. Yeah, to I just, be. I wonder if like the long-term memory mechanisms right. or the mechanisms that store not just memories, but concepts, that allow you to uh, to, to reason, uh, like and 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 compose concepts. If those things will look very different than neural networks, or if you can do that within a, a single neural network with some particular sort of architecture quirks, uh, that seems to be a, a really open problem. And of course, I go up and down on that because it's um, there's something so compelling to the uh, to the s symbolic AI or to um, to the ideas of. Uh, logic-based sort of expert systems. You have like human interpretable facts that mm -hmm. built on top of each other. It's really annoying, like with self-supervised learning, that uh, the AI is not very explainable. Like you can't like understand all the beautiful thing is, is, has learned. You can't ask it like questions. Uh, but then again, maybe that's a stupid thing for us humans to want. Right, I think whenever we try to like, understand it, we're putting our own subjective human bias into it. Yeah. And I think that's the sort of problem. With self-supervised learning, the goal is that 
it should learn naturally from the data so now if you try to understand it you are using your you're using your own preconceived notions of what this mm -hmm. model has learned exactly. i think that's the problem